Well, hello 3E and welcome to our lesson on cross-border shopping. Our goal today, I know how to calculate the exchange rate between Canadian and American dollars. Um, so we're talking a little bit about cross-border shopping. Uh, with the Canadian dollar floating around par with the American dollar, there are lots of goods cheaper in the United States than they are here in Canada. It would be helpful to be able to make a conversion between the two currencies um, so you can see whether it's actually cheaper over there or not. Uh, but first, what does par mean? Well, par is short for parity. And if two currencies are on parity, um, that means that two currencies are worth the same amount. Currencies are worth equal amounts. If the Canadian dollar were on par with the American dollar, one Canadian dollar, CAD, would equal one US dollar, USD. Um, so how much is our dollar worth right now anyway? Well, let's have a look-see. Um, I'm going to show you an interesting thing in Google. If you just start typing in exchange rate, uh, notice that this pops up. It's got this built-in exchange rate and it says one Canadian dollar equals 0.96 US dollars. Okay, so our Canadian dollar when we go to the States is only worth 96 cents. Uh, so let's put this in here and then I want to talk a little bit more. So one Canadian dollar, one Canadian dollar CAD equals 0.96 USD. Okay. Uh, but now let's go back to this uh, because this has got an interesting little graphic beside it. Take a look. Remember when I said the Canadian dollar had been floating around par? Here's what I mean. Look at this from 2010 on. It's right around this dollar mark and that dollar mark is par. That means that both of the currencies would be worth a dollar at the same time. So right around 2010 it sort of hopped up to to parity and then it's been hovering around there sometimes it's actually above sometimes the Canadian currency is worth more than the US currency and sometimes it's a little bit below uh, but it's been up and down and the last little bit of 2013 uh, we've been a little bit under the US dollar um, but that's not a big concern what I do also want to point out here though is is look at this jump down here in 2009 it was only worth 80 cents and in fact it was worth even less than that a few years before that um, where it would have been worth down here in the 60 cent range or even below um, it's been this uh, the economic slowdown across the world um, where the Canadian dollar has been actually stronger than the American dollar um, our economy was doing a little bit better than the American economy and that's why our dollar was so much stronger um, that we were able to reach parity with the United States so uh, we could actually type in um, what we want here and Google would convert it for us. So Google is a really helpful thing for conversion. Uh, we're not going to use Google, we're going to actually use math. Um, and let's see what the next one says. Why does a textbook tell me the exchange rate of one US dollar equals a dollar fifty four Canadian? Um, well, it tells you that uh, because at the time the text was written, at the time The text was written the Canadian dollar was well under par the Canadian dollar was well under par okay so let's have a look at what this says and I'm going to use um, the current exchange rate of one Canadian dollar to 0.96 US dollars um, to, uh, to calculate the uh, cost here. When you are doing this stuff in the textbook, um, you can 
do it the other way around or sorry not the other way around you can do it with the with the conversion factor that they give you. Now it's interesting to note that there's, there's actually two ways to write this. If one Canadian dollar is equal to nine zero point nine six US dollars, um, so we write down one Canadian dollar to zero point nine six US dollars. Um, how many Canadian dollars is one American dollar worth? And so we can actually set this up and we can use cross multiplying to figure it out. Uh, we'll put an X here and when we cross multiply we get um, 1 times 1 is 1 and over here 0.96X, 0.96X and we'll divide both sides by 0.96. So let's pull up my calculator here and go 0. Or 1 divided by 0.96 is a dollar four. So x equals a dollar four. So what that means is our other conversion rate is that one US dollar equals a dollar four Canadian. And so you can see the difference between this conversion rate and the one the textbook was telling you to get, they said that one US dollar was a dollar fifty four Canadian. So there's a big fifty cents difference. And while fifty cents difference may not seem a lot to you, if you're buying um, a large ticket item in the United States, fifty cents difference is a lot. So let's have a look. Um, this isn't a large ticket item; it's only fifteen seventy five. Uh, we're going to use this conversion rate. And it doesn't matter which one of these I use, whether it's one Canadian dollar versus one US dollar, we're going to set it up like a proportion either way. So let's use the first one. One Canadian dollar equals 0 0.96 US dollars. And when we set it up, we have to make sure on the other side of the equal sign, when we set up our ratio, that the top is Canadian dollars and the bottom is US dollars. Now in this case this says a shirt purchase in the US costs this. How much is that in Canadian funds? So it's Canadian funds we don't know so we're gonna put the X on top uh, and this is US dollars so it has to go on the bottom where US dollars are so 1575 and now we cross multiply so 0.96 times X 0.96 X is going to equal this in the other direction, 1 times 15.75, which is just going to be 15.75. And then we have to divide both sides by 0.96. And this is going to be the same process every time. First we cross multiply and then we divide by whatever is with the x. So we get the x completely by itself and let's pull up my calculator here, 15.75 divided by 0 0.96 is 1641 equals sixteen dollars and forty one cents. So therefore it would have cost sixteen dollars and forty one cents in Canada. Okay, next question. I purchased a calculator in the US for ten ninety nine. When I got home I noticed that the same calculator at Walmart cost eleven ninety nine Canadian. Did I get a deal in the US? How much money did I save? Um so this sort of says that yes it probably was a deal but let's have a look and see. Uh, so we've got the conversion rate of one Canadian dollar is worth 96 cents in the United States US dollars. Whoops. Doo, 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 doo. US dollars. And so um, what is this 1099? I purchased a calculator in the US for 1099. So that's a US dollar. So I'm going to go 1099 
and I have to figure out what it is in Canadian and see if it's anywhere near that 11.99. So cross multiplying, I get 0 0.96 times x equals 1 times 10.99. So I'm going to divide by 96, by 0 0.96, 0 0.96, 0 0.96. And we get, pull up my calculator, 1099 divided by 0 0.96 is 1145. If I round to there, 7 rounds that 4 up, so 1145. So it does look like I got a deal. It was 1199 here. Notice it says, how much did I save? Well, 11.99 minus 11.45. That is going to be 54 cents. 0 0.54. 54 cents. Now, did I really save 54 cents? Because isn't there sales tax? Maybe I saved a little bit more. Well. When you purchase an item in the U.S., you may have to pay taxes and duty at the borders. You may have to pay all those Canadian taxes when you get it back across here. Uh, in addition to any American taxes, depending on what state you're in. Uh, if you've been to the U.S. for more than 24 hours, you may spend $200 on items before you are taxed. If you go over $200, you pay duty on the total amount. 48 hours or longer, you can spend $800 without duty. Anything you spend over that when you are out will be subject to HST, GST and PST, as well as 7% special duty charge on the next $300. All items are converted to Canadian dollars before calculations are made. So there's this rather strange, well not really strange, but a little bit complicated way that they decide how much duty you owe the Canadian government when you come back across the border. Um, we'll sort of simplify that a little bit. Um, you purchase a laptop on a 24-hour trip to the U.S. It costs $644 USD. How much in total does it cost when you get back to Canada? The first thing we need to do is switch this into Canadian dollars. And we know that one CAD is the same as um, 0.96 USD. So let's do this again. This is USD, so it goes on the bottom, 644.99. And we're figuring that out. So 0 0.96 USD, oops, sorry, not USD, 0 0.96 X equals $644.96. Now divide both sides by that 0 0.96, 0 0.96. 0 0.96 and our answer is x equals uh, 644.96 divided by 0.96 um, that should have been 0.99 I'm just getting carried away with my 0.96's so let's try that again. It's not going to be a whole lot different, but 644.99 divided by 0.96. Uh, $671.86. So $671.86. See that very slight parity? Uh, uh, slight bit off parity racks up a fair bit when, you, uh, when you're buying large ticket items. Because um, it's a savings of $30, which isn't anything to sneeze at. <clears throat> okay, now $671 is definitely too much money for a 24-hour trip. So what does it tell us? For 24 hours, if we go over $200, we pay duty on the total amount. And duty at this point is just HST. So to find our total, we have to add in the HST, which we know is uh, 13%. So adding HST, HST, we do uh, $671, this is our total, 
I'm going to do it all in one swoop. Swoop 671.86 times 1.13. Now, $671.86 times 1. Point, whoops. $671.86 times 1.13 is $759.20. $759.20. So you can't escape sales tax even when you go across the border. Um, and if you try to sneak it back across the border, you could be in big, big trouble. Um, so it's best to declare your stuff and pay your duty when you come across the border. Now when you're looking at the textbook and you're practicing the questions in the textbook, use the rules that the textbook tells you. The rules for bringing stuff across the border have changed since your textbook was written, um, but it, they've changed mostly only in the amounts that you're allowed to claim. And um, it would be easier for you to see if you're getting the math right if you follow their instructions on um, how much things cost when you came across the border so that you can check in the back of the book and see if your math is correct. When I give you a question later, I'm going to give you the actual instructions on how, uh, like I would give you all of this, this stuff up here uh, on a test so that you would know how you were supposed to calculate it. And that's the end of this video.